Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. This is A-Game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hello. As usual, I'm still posting stuff. I try really, really hard. But the list of places I need to post grows. And I can't start posting until I go live. So that people can hit the link. I sorry. Okay, I'm done posting stuff. Okay. Okay. So. Hey, C. Hey, Ebo. Hey, Brian. Hey, UFO. Hey, Father's Time. Hey, Jean. Hey, David. Hey, Bronze. Oh, Walaikum well, Asalaam, David. Was that a troll, Mr. Edward Hyde? Because he usually comes to my chat room really respectfully. So, was that a troll account or somebody using his account, y'all think? Oh, the Pink Panther, because... <laughs> so, what did I want to talk about today? I'm doing okay today. I was going to take my car into the shop, but the check engine light went out. Ta-da! So, I have to take it anywhere. Ta-da! And I'm just going to tell myself it was a glitch. Ta-da! So, I was just going to not share the entire video. Because it's like a 36 minute video. But just a few little parts. Right, because I have been telling you guys this same stuff, but maybe you'll hear it from somewhere else. So, I'm going to jump right into that. Let me share this screen. right here so you guys you guys can see that right Okay, you guys can see the screen. So I'm just going to play this one right here. And you guys can hear a little something. Encouraging women to see themselves as 
finally Victor. done by. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, and it's no one, I mean, that's been the most fascinating thing. I remember, you know, um, there was a, a famous sociologist called Jessie Ber- Bernard. She uh-huh. wrote a book called The Future of Marriage 50 mm-hmm. Years Ago. Mm-hmm. And the, the big theme, it was very much the f- sort of second wave, start of second wave feminism, I suppose. Um, and her big theme was that marriage is good for men but bad for women. And it was all about, you know, women taking value and women that stuck at home as housewives, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, that was absolutely embraced by the, the feminists of the time, the women's movement. And, and what is absolutely fascinating is so marriage has been turned on its ear, conforming to what the feminists say that women should have wanted, and yet women are no happier. That's what's no, I, I know. <laughs> no, they're worse. They're miserable you know, because they're, they're being taught to, yeah, they're the being more, taught to do things that are opposite of what they want to do, and they're having yeah. to suppress their actual like, genuine feminine identity, which is to be loved and cared for and take care of their babies, and all of that stuff has been ripped out of women under this guise that you are only worth what you produce. Yeah, and sure. the, the feeling of if I don't get a master's degree and a PhD, and if I don't have a really great career, then I am less than, then I am not worthy, you know? And it's yeah. just, it, that's not, that's not, that's so against what women naturally feel because they are so connected and so happy when they are focused on their relationships, which is why yeah. after X amount of time of being in the workforce, for workforce for 10, 15, 20 years, it loses its luster. It loses its luster. All they want is a happy ham- happy family life, a happy relationship, a baby. It's just, that's just normal. It may not. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Father's time is silly. Cause she do kind of sound like it was some, it was a little th- the throat chakra was blocked. You understand what I'm saying? The throat chakra was it was something going on with the throat chakra. But I'm gonna turn it back on. However, these women are echoing what I've been telling y'all. Okay. This is the truth about being a male identified woman. She just said women are being taught that they are only worth what they can produce. That is a masculine position. Men are taught that they are worth what they produce. And any man that cannot produce to a sufficient, sufficient meaning at minimum enough to take care of himself consistently, he might be considered worthless because he cannot produce, but production is one of the measures of masculinity and manhood. It is masculine. That's being male identified identifying with the masculine trait of needing to produce something tangible in order to be worthy. Complete opposite of feminine energy. The complete opposite of feminine energy. We may produce tangible things sometimes, But most of our production is intangible. I told you that. Maybe you listen to it from another source. Thank you, Ebo Sosa says, setting it off. The pimp guy said it well. Feminism puts women in front of the man rather than beside him. Exactly. Thank you, Father's Time. Oh, uh, she flipping in there. And this is what I was getting to the other day as well. While you busy twerking on Washington, they're busy trying to reverse the damage because they trying to get saved. They're not trying to be lost in the sauce that was created by their counterpart.
created by their counterpart. They got caught up in it. We free, we liberated, da, da, da. all this other kind of stuff. Now they looking at the damage, looking at the writing on the wall, looking around. Now they like, oh, no, 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 no. That, uh, that feminism was wrong. Wokeness is wrong, y'all. We don't need to be woke. We don't need, we don't need to be woke. No, no more woke. No more woke. No more woke. I told y'all I'm seeing uh, palm color femininity channels. What you should do to be able to attract your soulmate and keep your soulmate for the rest of your life. And it's dainty and it's soft. You guys on the mean, uh, in the meantime are calling into the show that shall not be named talking about how much submission you not gonna give and what you not gonna do and what he better do when y'all get together talking about what what your man better do when you ain't had no man in 10 years a whole decade done passed you by and you ain't had no stable man I'm telling you this much. If it reach a decade and I still ain't got no husband, I'm going to hang it up. I'm just going to be like, okay, well, whatever then. I'm going to, I'm going to, I really am going to sit back and crochet. I really am going to do that. I'm going to have me a whole rocking chair. I'm going to get one of them antique rocking chairs. I'm going to do it big too. I'm going to do a grandma big, grandma style. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my little house shoes. I'm going to have my house coat. The one with the little beady flowers on there with the little pearl snaps. I'm going to have that on. I'm going to have not these glasses. They're going to be bigger than that. With the little chain that keep them around your neck. I'm going to do the whole thing. I'd rather do that than go somewhere and try to call up somebody talking about some help me find a man and you ain't had and then listing a bunch of demands about stuff you ain't gonna do and you ain't had no man in a decade. Y'all still running around here talking about level up and being sugar babies at 34. You ain't no sugar baby at 34. Nothing baby about you. You maple syrup middle aged. Cause you ain't a sugar baby. You middle aged maple syrup. Thank you, Book Around, and said my compliments to the chef. Keep cooking. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, if it take me, yeah, alligator syrup. If it take me, you middle aged molasses. <laughs> you middle aged molasses, girl. There ain't no sugar and no baby about that. You, you sugar and you got a couple babies. Girl, bye. You talking about leveling up at 52. You ain't reached the highest level of yourself. You ain't got in touch with your femininity in five decades. Right, Father Sam. Father Sam said most black women gynocratic foolishness. <laughs> the 80% is still falling for the I'm um, strong, black, educated, and independent, steady losing, fronting on social media like they're up. Do you got these chicks on here 52 years old talking about level up? 
girl. At 50 something. I don't mind you. I don't mind you giving relationship advice at 50 something. But give it from a standpoint of I'm I'm solidified in my marriage. I'm solidified in the relationship that I, I've been in this relationship. This is how I'm maintaining a healthy, functional relationship. This is how you can maintain it. This is what has worked for me. This is what has not worked for me. This is the type of advice that I give here. Because I had a long, successful marriage. I had a relationship. The only reason I'm not in this relationship today is because in 2018, on this day, January 21st, he passed away. That's the only reason why. You got to at least, at by five decades on this earth, you got to at least have somebody who wanted you good enough to say, this is my wife. I'm not going to live without her. I want this woman in my life. I want this woman, not a woman. I want that woman right there in my life. And I'm going to place her in my life. I'm going to put her in my life. Thank you, Ronan said there will be exceedingly high consequences in opting to fling dingleberries in public and communal sabotage under the guise of freedom. Exactly. I'm going to turn that video back on. Thank you all for your sentiments. This is probably going to be the last time I publicly acknowledge that. Today marks three years exactly. I'm not going to forget them, but I'm not going to publicly acknowledge it anymore. And that's not any shade or anything. It's just time. It's just time. I know who he was. And that's enough for me. But at least I ain't sitting here. God willing be, uh, be 43 in June and ain't no man in four decades never said Crimson is gonna be my wife and I'm gonna make it so at least I know what it is to be in a relationship a healthy one and I know what it feel like to have your husband love you I know what it is to go through the up, go through the down. And the work it takes to actually make a marriage work. It's not a pie in the sky. I don't have an imagination of what it might be to be married. I have the functioning working knowledge. It's a whole lot of work. Every day, no days off, sometimes two a days. Some of the most fulfilling work that I have ever done in my life because I was in my feminine element. He didn't ask me to do more than what I could. And he took point and leadership position at all times. And I was always falling back. Just fall back. Just be the wife. Just be the wife.
Thank you, Coach DC. That gave me chills and made me emotional. Loss of a good brother. Condolences. Thank you so much. It's not a pie in the sky. It's not what feminism told you it would be that you get into this marriage and this man is supposed to serve you. No. That's not how it works. Will men give you? Yes, they will. But I was telling some good friends of mine the other night. We was all talking on the phone. And I said, this is how a lioness gets things from a man that you want. You don't demand it. You don't throw a tantrum about it. You don't get angry. I want this. I want that. You don't pay me no attention. You don't do this thing. You don't do that. Why you don't do this thing? Why? All that fussing. Kill it. How a lioness gets what she wants out of a man is first of all, be feminine with him. That's number one. And keep up that energy. Don't fake it. Do it. Do or do not. There is no try. There is no fake. You're either in your feminine energy or you're not. Be in your feminine energy. And if there's something you want, be able and willing to request it gently from him. You want more time? Don't think you're getting enough attention? Don't say, you ain't paying me no attention. Why you ain't paying me no attention? Why you ain't paying me no attention? Don't, don't. That, that, I, 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 you're guaranteeing him to ignore you. First, be feminine. And then you know what else you do to get things from a man? Y'all want to know what else you got to do to get stuff from a man? Thank you, Extended Clips. Said marriage is not the paper contract. It's you recognizing the creator from within your partner. Mm-hmm. Y'all want to know what the next thing after being feminine with the man, what the next thing is to get stuff you want. Y'all want to know? What else you do? What else a lioness does after she's in her feminine energy? And I'm going to use the example of a woman wanting more time. Because face it, ladies, we always, when it's a masculine man around and his light shine bright, you always want more. The nature of the vessel. It's the nature of the vessel. We vessels, we can't help that. Thank you, C. Said this teaching is so needed. Much respect to you for sharing the knowledge like a big sister. No problem. I hope, some, I hope somebody can take from this something good that will help them. The next thing that she does after she's feminine, give him something. Give him something. You want something, don't ask. Don't demand it. Give him something. What is that something? It could be anything, but make sure you give him something he wants. We're not going to talk intimacy. Too many of you use that backwards. You hustle backwards with that. So we're not going to talk intimacy. First, give him the femininity because he wants it. Number two, give him something. Physical, intangible. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you know he wants that thing. My go-tos are always some sort of catering. Some sort of food, some sort of massage, some sort of service. I'll start serving. Because he wants that. He may not say he want it. But if he's constantly, oh, I'm sore. Oh, ah. He wants you to touch him. 
Gotcha. Don't ask for sex. Touch him. Give him something. Along with that, give him something else. Kind words. Give him kind words. Begin to extol his goodness. Don't be facetious. All right? Don't. Don't be facetious. Don't be phony. Mean it when you say it. Because see, when I tell my man how great he is, how much I, how much I love him because of the man he is, not because of what he gives to me, not because of what he does for me, but because he exists simply the way that he is. And that existence inspires me to be more and better and better and better to him. Point out the good that he has done. Whether it was for you, the community, somewhere else, somewhere. Point out the good that he has done. One of the companions of the prophet, peace be upon him, once said, If you spread evil, evil will spread. But if you spread good, good will spread. So spread good to your husband. Spread good to him. Give him something. If you don't do nothing but give him a laugh, do something that you know will tickle him and do it genuinely. Because that's what you want to do. Because you want to see the smile on his face. Say something you know he think is funny. Go do it. Watch him be like, <laughs> okay. Wasn't expecting that. Give him something. And then watch his hands do like this. Not to receive, but to give. If you want more time with him, because you don't think you're get ignore the cat. I think my sister probably left out of here. So he's clowning. Ignore him. He's going to scream for like two minutes. Just act like it's not happening. Anyway, let's say you want more time with him. Don't say you didn't spend enough time with me. It's accusatory. It's accusatory. It's a guilt trip. Don't lay a guilt trip. You know what you do after you've given him something? Put your head on his chest. Say, I miss you, baby. I miss you. I miss you. It doesn't accuse him of anything. It doesn't make it seem like he's not doing enough. It doesn't make him feel like he's ignoring you or that he's done something wrong. It is a simple statement of what really is the issue. You miss him. You miss him. That's your issue. Don't dress it up with what he did wrong. The issue is, I miss you.
And then he'll start thinking, you know what? I could probably call a little more. I could probably. I could. Okay. He might not even say nothing. Well, he might be one of them guys. So you miss me. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm here right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then proceed to make his time with you both memorable, quality, and a third one, positive. He will remember how you made him feel. That is what we do as women. We cultivate an emotional environment for him so that when he thinks of us, he doesn't think of us and associate that with something negative. He thinks of you and associates it with, I felt good when I communicated with her, when I was around her, when I came in the space she was at, I felt good. I didn't feel pressured. I didn't feel confused. I didn't feel angry. I didn't feel anxiety. I didn't feel like, uh, what did you do? Okay. I felt good. Hmm. Sometimes, ladies, it's just the energy. Maybe you don't say nothing. Maybe you don't do anything. But the vibe, the energy you putting off made him feel good. Wasn't no tension between you. Wasn't thick, thick enough you can cut it with a knife in the air. Like, what's going on here? The list and the occasion of men's needs within a marriage are not very long. I'll repeat that. The list and the occasion of men's needs within a marriage is not very long and it's not complicated. The only time that gets complicated is when you feel like you ain't gotta do it or you don't wanna do it or you shouldn't have to do it or you are approaching your relationship like, well, what you going to do for me if I do this for you? That's not how you have a relationship. That tit for tat, that's not how you get a relationship going. Tit for tat is petty. You do that with people you don't like. You don't do that with your husband. You don't, because if he go tit for tat, for what he do for you versus what you do for him, you gonna lose. Don't go tit for tat. I'm almost gonna whoop that cat. Because he know better than to do that. He must have heard me say that. Anyway. Don't do tit for tat. Because if he start naming off the stuff he do, which is like 98% tangible. You going to lose. Tit for tat don't do you no favors, ma'am. Don't go tit for tat. That's for folk you don't like. 
If you love your husband, you never go tit for tat with him. You never count what you do versus what he did from this and that. And, well, I did this and, and well, you do that. No. we All of that, he got to split the housework. He got, no, 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 la, net, no. Thank you, Sanu. So for my wife and I, may Allah grant you goodness. I mean, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. If you love him, you don't count. You just appreciate and reciprocate. That's what you do. Appreciate and reciprocate. He is not looking for you to do with him what he does with you. He's not looking for that. Not the way you're thinking about it. In that one for one kind of way. He's not thinking about that. The occasion and the list of men's needs in a relationship is not very long. And it's not very complicated. The only time it gets complicated is when you feel like you don't want to do it. Or worse, you ain't got to do it. And then you approach it selfishly. Well, what am I going to get out of doing whatever he wants you to do? How about sometimes nothing? You don't like that. Sometimes you don't get anything for doing for him what you should be doing. The satisfaction of altruistically doing it. You don't always get something in return. That's not how reciprocity works. It's not how reciprocity works. You do for your husband, and sometimes you don't even get a thank you. How about them apples? Do you say thank you every time he pay rent? How about every time he pay a bill? You say thank you? Every time? Every single solitary time? What about some of them times he just spontaneously take you somewhere to go eat? You say thank you all the time for that? Or you just expect him to do, oh, it was so sweet. He intuitively did it. Yeah, right. Right. Because a lot of them times he's doing stuff and he don't even get a thank you. You think you better than that? You think you better? You should get all the praise. Tierra asks, how does it work? How does Reciprocity work. Reciprocity happens when there is a give and a take on both sides. What you receive should be what you want to receive and what you need to receive from that opposite person. What they receive is the same. What they want to receive and what they need to receive from you. The actual things will be different. However, reciprocity occurs when I am giving something, but I am also receiving things I want and need out of you. That's when reciprocity occurs because I am receiving things that I want and need out of you. The things that I give 
are worth it. It's a bartering system. It's a trade. It's a trade. Because see, I can't give my husband what he give me. I can't. I can't give him that. I can't. He maintains for me not only the filling of my vessel with his masculine light, but he maintains my physical world. I maintain his inner world. By providing that world with feminine energy because men are also vessels. I provide feminine energy to him, positive feminine energy, not toxic. And I maintain his inner world. What is his inner world? His emotional self. I maintain that because that is my wheelhouse. So when he's down, when he's up, when he's happy, when he's sad, when he's contemplating, I am supposed to be able to manage his energy for him. There's a reason why I rule the nest. The reason we're in charge of the nest is to set the nest up. So that what is put in the nest and what is produced out of it is a positive reflection of you and him. The nest consists of my ability to manage all the energy in it, including and especially his. So I'm the one that's supposed to be intuitive. If he comes home and he's upset, I need to have the emotional intelligence to understand now is not the time to tell him that the refrigerator is busted. Not the time. It's not the time to tell him that this bill is overdue. Not the time, because really you ain't even supposed to be telling him about no bill being overdue because you're supposed to be the one managing how to pay that one. But we ain't going to talk about that. You're supposed to be able to intuit. I can't do this and this and this right now. Right now, what he needs is you fill in the blank. Sometimes he needs a hug and just silent comfort. Sometimes he needs nobody in his face. I don't care what you trying to say. You or them naughty head kids. I want you all out my face right now. Sometimes he just want peace and quiet. I don't be bothered. Thank you, D. Miller L. So when you thought he was gonna come in and immediately relieve you and be the babysitter while you go, that not, no. No, he was not. 
looking to come right in and start babysitting. No, he was not looking for that. No, he was not trying to do that. If I know he's been stressed out by external things going on, I'm supposed to have the emotional intelligence to de-stress him in whichever way that's got to happen. And yes, a lot of that for men is sex. Don't shoot the messenger. A lot of that de-stressing for men is sex. This is why you don't withhold it. Because you can't forget you're the vessel. You're meant to hold what he doesn't hold. I'm going to strangle that cat. Because he's really taking it to the next level. Anyway, remember that you are the vessel. What he don't hold, you hold. And that's one way to get stuff, energy from one to the another. Sex. Might have been upset. He might not even really be talking to you. But, assuming he's not mad at you. But if you kind of toot that thing, he'll be mad, but he'll be, you know, get that stress all out his back. Might be able to talk now. <laughs> Go run him some bath water. He'll be all right. And guess what, ladies? Sometimes he don't want to talk to you after that either. Ooh. Did I hit you where you lived yet? Sometimes he don't talk after that either. It helped. He'll talk later. He'll do one of them. I'm kind of still silent because whatever's going on probably still going on. But when we get in the bed, I'm going to grab you. When we lay down and go to sleep, I'm going to grab you. Might have to go again. You supposed to take the weight off of his shoulders. That's your job as a wife. That's your wifely job. You supposed to take them weights off his shoulders. Or at least give him solace about the weights he carry that you can't carry. Because it's some weights he can't give you. Some weights he can't give you, but you can give him solace about those. Hey, PG, how you doing, sweetheart? Let me see. Let me go ahead and confer a wrench upon my brother. I might not get back to that video because y'all know what I'm talking about. See, this is where the practical working knowledge of a marriage comes in at. 
and all you woke chicken heads running around here trying to count off all the things he got to do for you. You think because you went and got a degree or you went and did this and did that, that he's somebody supposed to serve you and bow at your feet. Ain't nobody about to do that. Because for the man you say you want, it's you that do the bowing. Ah, y'all don't like that because you dropped off. For the kind of man you say you want, you might need to get down on a knee and propose. But you woke. He me he don't never do half the dishes. You don't do half his work. I double dog dare you to go do half his work. I was watching this um clip from one of them. I don't be knowing no more. Uh, which reality show i think it's a new one and she was like i'm the first black woman so something she named herself and they was in mississippi and i said girl you a whole glorified social worker if you don't stop you somewhere sitting behind the desk pushing pencils and eating dunkin donuts every morning girl if you don't stop doing you are not doing half of his work i guarantee you that See, y'all women, y'all don't understand what men do. Y'all have no idea what men actually do. Because you never lived with a man. You never had a man. You live with a, with a guy that you considered a boy. That's what y'all been living with. You ain't never lived with no man. So you don't know what men do. You ain't never just sat and looked at your man from across the room and he didn't know you was looking at him. And you can just see the worry and the contemplation on his face. You can see the weight on him. You can see it. And to not fully know what weight he carrying. And all that you understand how to do as a wife is to assist him in whichever way he say he need assistance right now. Somebody put my cash out in there. See, y'all ain't never did that. All you have done is try to keep a man underneath your boot heel. That's not how it is when you live with a man. You ain't never watched him be so consumed with whatever else and then try to change his energy because you came in and he don't want you to see them weights he carrying. He don't want you to see it. So he changed his. Hey baby what you doing. But you know that's not what he feel.
You don't know what it feel like to lay up with your man at night and he sleep and you just start speaking greatness in his ears. You speak to his soul. You don't know how to do that. You don't know what it is to do that. And you don't know the joy that it is for that same man, no matter what y'all going through, to look you in your face and tell you, you one of the best things that have ever happened to me. I could not have asked for a better woman. All the time, you knowing what kind of shortcomings you got, and he overlooking them. He ain't even talking about that. Thank you, sheep. He ain't even talking about your shortcomings today. He know you got them. He know what they are. Intimately. He don't like them. But he ain't talking about that. So you ain't never lived with no man. You ain't never had to tell him you can you can lean on me and this won't go anywhere. No one will know what you tell me here today. This is me and you and it ain't nobody else. For him to have a comfort to know that he can trust you and he can confide something in you and it ain't and it ain't all across the world tomorrow morning. You done posted it on Facebook. Thank you, C. Douglas. But you woke. You know how to run a partnership. You want a partnership. That man I was married to, I was never that man's partner. We didn't have a partnership. We had a marriage. I never looked at him and said, I'm on equal toe-to-toe -to -toe footing with you. The only ways in which we were toe-to-toe -to -toe is I was an adult and he was one. We was both Muslim. We were autonomous human beings. We were equal in our humanity. But I never, ever, one time looked at that man. I don't care how sick he got. I don't care what the bank account looked like. I don't care what happened. I never looked at that man and said, I'm better than him. Or I'm equal to him. I have equity with him, not equality. I have equity. I don't have a partnership. Partnerships imply that we giving the exact same things to this as the other one is doing. And marriages is not like that. That's why your relationships don't work. Because you running around here talking about you want a partnership. And that's not how marriages work. You can do a partnership in business. Okay. 
You do a partnership in business. I'm going into a business venture. He put up a hundred thousand and so did I to start this business. We just gonna do a little bit of division of labor. I'm better at the social and the networking part. He better at the keeping the books and the accounting part. And then it, that's a partnership. A marriage is not like that. Ladies, if you just want to know, marriages don't work that way. You go into your relationships thinking it's a partnership and they will fail every time unless you got a weak-minded man that don't understand his purpose. We call them simps and maggles. You've proven you don't like them dudes. You like a man and know his purpose as a man. So do I. All lionesses do. All women do. Regardless of what they say. But it requires you to understand your purpose as a woman. Marriages are not partnerships. You need to get that straight. I'm not his equal in this relationship. I'm not his. He is my better. Y'all want to hear that? Do they want to hear that? Because I don't think they want to hear that. You think they want to hear that? Because I don't think they want to hear that. You sure? I should go. I should. I should go down that rabbit hole. Sure. Okay. My husband is my better. I just want a man to lead. The only time you get to be qualified to lead is if you are the best among those whom you lead. And if he's leading you, then he's better than you. The leader has to be your better, or else they're not qualified to lead. If you have a professional kitchen, a commercial kitchen, the executive chef needs to be the best chef in that kitchen. They need to be able to assist their line cooks at any given moment. They need to be able to spot and make a standard of quality control. The executive chef is their better. You better than them. That's why he's the executive chef and they not. Does that answer your question, uh, Tierra? He's your better. He's the better leader. He's your better. He needs to be better than you. He needs to do more than you. He needs to know more than you. He needs to be more capable than you. He needs to be able to teach you something and tell you something. Y'all are not on equal footing because if he was your peer, he could not be your leader. My husband 
was never my peer. He always had some knowledge I didn't have. There was always something he could do that I couldn't do. Any man that I call my husband, inshallah, will have that same quality of being my better. Or else, what are we doing? If he's not my better, what are we doing? We girlfriends at that point. Ooh, girl, hey, girl, ooh, we girlfriends. He, that's my, that's my saucy little friend. That's my zesty little friend then. I don't need a zesty friend to spend my life with. I need a husband. He got to be better than me. Or else I don't want him leading. What, the, what qualify him to lead? I lead you. We'll lead each other. That's the goofy stuff y'all woke chicks be talking about. We'll lead each other. That's the most foolish ridiculous, asinine stuff that I have ever heard in my entire 42 years of living. All the numbers is dropping off because they don't like this one. My husband is better than me, which qualifies him to lead. I look to him for the foresight needed to create the structure that we're going to need in order to move ahead as a couple. I need him to be able to do that because I for sure can't do it. If he, if he relying on me to create a structure, we doomed because I'm bad with structures. I, Bear restructures. I had something planned out and then it was show is the day is long. I won't follow that plan. I'll be like, well, I don't even feel like doing that. We're going to scratch that off. We'll do that tomorrow. Mm -mm. We're doing that tomorrow. No, 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 no. We're doing that tomorrow just because I don't feel like it. I woke up with a headache and then I had a dream about it. So we ain't going to do that right now. We just going to do that tomorrow. So we're going to pencil that in for tomorrow. I'm gonna, ooh, I, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do my hair. That's what I think I'm going to do. But how does that help us, baby? You want me to look good, don't you? I gotta do my hair. I gotta do my hair. I gotta pencil. I gotta pencil. At least this is the, I do braids and stuff. This is a four hour hairstyle. So four hours hairstyle. I can't be trusted to to get a structure going. I can't be trusted. It's not gonna work. And it, does that mean I'm stupid? No. It just means I'm a woman. That's why a lot of these single women's lives is so messed up and chaotic because they don't have nobody to produce the structure. You can't produce a structure. And that's also my, that's also my um, opinion as to why they gravitate to school because at least school is a structure. You got homework, you got classes, you got... And then women gravitate to somewhere that can produce a structure for them. Anywhere you go on any scale, women need a structure and they can't produce it themselves. This is why renegades don't do as well as hoes that's got pimps. Because he provide a structure. Renegades ain't got no structure. See what I'm saying? You would think that a renegade would do better, but she can't. Because she don't have a structure. She also doesn't have a male to project and be her animus. Because she's so screwed up, she doesn't have a properly developed one. But we're not going to talk about that part. Exactly, uh, see, they need somebody to tell them what to do and when to do it and when to stop. Women need that. 
We just do. We don't. We don't. We aren't capable of pro of producing a functional structure. We just not. The vast majority of us can't do this. Very rare women, very rare women can produce some type of structure in a lot. But even that pales in comparison to the type of structure that a competent man can produce. Because our structure is limited by the limitation of our lack of foresight. That is why the structure does not work. Because women don't have proper foresight. We have insight. That's why when you ask women what's their five-year plan, they don't know. You're asking them to see too long into the future. We can't do that. We don't have the foresight. If you're a properly developed woman, you got a ton of insight. A ton. A ton. I have a ton of insight. If you ask me what's going on, and it's something I know about. I can, I can, I can go through that. I can go through that and work through that and be like, you know what? It could be like this and it could be like that. Because you know what? Because you know what? It's probably like this because of this thing and that thing and that factor over there probably did it this way and did it that way. Boom. That's what it is. That's my insight. But if you ask me, baby, What's our five-year plan as a couple? How are we going to get the finances done? How are we going to... I'm going to be like, huh? What you mean? What's a five-year plan? What's, what's, what's a five-year plan? What's talking about? I'm going to get real dumb. I'm going to get real dumb. What you talking about? The five-year plan. The plan how you going to help us move forward in five years. We don't need to be in the same spot five years from now as we is today. So what's your plan on, you know what I'm saying? Because we need to make a certain dollar amount a year within a couple of, I'm going to be like, huh? I'm going to get, I'm going to be, I'm going to be dumb. I'm going to be dumb as a box of rocks. I'm going to be dumb, y'all. I'm going to be dumb. I'm going to be like, huh? You find your plan. I don't know. I mean, let's see. I work this way. And I be making this a month. How we gonna turn that into that money? I don't know. You tell me. Now, once he come up with the structure and the plan, I can assist that because the structure is there already. I'm an assistant. I assist. I don't do. I assist what is being done. Ta-da! That's my job. The assistant didn't make the company. She just helped the company. I'm just going to help the company. I'm not going to make it. Duh. I don't even want to make it. I'm like low-key insulted that anyone would think that I should. Because it's outside of what I'm capable of. If you looking to me for a structure, we just not going to make it. We going to be worse than the Titanic. We just ain't going to make it. Just go ahead and sing that little sad Titanic song. Near, far, wherever you are. And I know that my heart will go on. So you just might as well go ahead and sing that little song. <laughs> Have a little montage. Because we sinking. We sinking. Mm-mm.
be on be on the, on the front of the ship like this as it hit the iceberg. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what we hit it. Self destruction. You had it for self destruction, and you, you, you count on me. <laughs> I can't make no structure. Mm -mm. That's why this community failed like it do. That's why these families and stuff is failing like it is because you got women at the head at the helm. Even if she's married, even if she is not a single woman, if she's married, but she's at the helm of that family, it is doomed because she don't got the tools that it take to actually lead them properly. I don't care how masculine she is. It's fake. It's fake masculinity because you don't have foresight and you don't have proper leadership skills. So I don't care how many times you come in the house and be like, I thought I told you to put gas in the car when you come back. Yeah, I don't care how, how many times you yell at him. And how many PS5s you buy. You not a man. And you don't have a good plan. Okay? You just don't. Your little goofy ideas might work at work. But they don't work at the house. Because at work... You might be called upon to have some ideas based on a structure that already exists. This is why you do well at work. The structure, the company, the, the things, the policies, they're already in place. They're not asking you to put that stuff in place. They're asking you for ideas on how maybe to assist it or improve it. That is what women do. At home, you're the leader, so therefore you have to be the one to bring up that and create the structure and you can't do it because you suck as a leader. Wah, wah. I know I'm hurting their feelings today. See, they don't like it today. That's all right. They ain't got to like it. You just got to do it. You don't have proper. You suck as a leader, which is why your household suck and your relationships that you do acquire because you are so bent on trying to lead that man somewhere. This is why these relationships don't work. And this is why single households, single mother ran households don't work either. Because you don't know how to lead nothing. Every once in a while you luck up on having children that might break a cycle that you didn't break. That was luck. That was divine intervention. That was a loss upon a thala. That wasn't you. And I'm going to prove that you know you suck. And then I'm going to wrap this up. Because when... Your single mother led household fail. You don't blame yourself. Who you blame? Who they blame? On the count of three. One, two, three. Who they blame?
You blame the man. And you blame the man because intrinsically you understand that had he been there, there would have been a structure. And because you you ran him off or he wasn't there, you can't have a structure. You know that. And the lack of accountability and responsibility for what your bad leadership produced is the very reason why you can't be a leader. Because leaders take responsibility because they understand that I cannot be counted as a successful leader if those who I lead are failing. And because you don't understand that is why you can't be the leader. <clears throat> Tierra said, help me. What about having full transparency? Is it needed on both parties or only the wife? Full transparency in terms of what? Because you can be transparent about some things and some things you don't need to. That, that need a little bit of clarification. Every couple, ha I will say this, every couple has secrets. There was stuff I didn't tell my husband, stuff he didn't need to know. And it wasn't about lying to him or causing some type of problem. A lot of those times, the stuff I didn't tell him spared him a lot of headache and worrying about stuff that I could handle. So I just didn't bother him with it. And there's some stuff he not going to tell you. And it's not about lying to you. It's just about what you going to do with it. If he do tell you what you going to do with the information. I'm hoping that that at least somewhat answered your question. But it's questions like those that I'm going to have a fun time answering when I start up my call-in show. Because when I posted it on the community tab, I had a lot of positive responses. So I'm probably going to roll that out in February. And I'm likely only going to do that maybe once or twice a month. I'm not, that's not going to be an everyday thing. That's going to be, and it's going to basically be about relationships or, you know what I'm saying? Maybe some personal issues. I'm not trying to be a therapist because I'm not licensed to be that. But, you know, just like an advice line or something like that. Because I think I got some things that I can tell some people and, you know, my live streams are my live streams. My videos are my videos. But sometimes that one-on-one -on -one conversation is a little bit uh, different for people. So with that being said, I am going to sign on off. But before I do, for the guys in the chat... This show has been sponsored by A Game, a male herbal solution. All right. Solution being the operative word in that sentence. So what I need you to do 
is go ahead and into the description box and click the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. Get your 10% off using the code Kendra10 and give yourself the gift of better health. Ladies, do the same for the men in your life. Remember when I was talking about give him something, give him A-Game. Give him A-Game. He won't know how to thank you. Give him that. All right. All right. And so, with that being said, my Crimsonites, I am going to sign off. Peace out. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.